ladies and gentlemen. It is my honor and pleasure to open and reconvene the fourth International Forum for Combating Antisemitism, initiated by the Department for Combating Antisemitism of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Israel, co-hosted with the Ministry for Jerusalem and Diaspora Affairs. I hope that we will make the utmost of this opportunity by discussing practical ways and exchanging fruitful ideas so that we shall come up with an operational action plan to combat anti-Semitism. I hereby declare formally the opening of the fourth global forum for combating anti-Semitism. We thank you all for coming, and without further delay, we will start with a video message by Mr. Benjamin Netanyahu, Prime Minister of Israel. I commend all the delegates attending the fourth global forum for combating anti-Semitism. There were two myths about anti-Semitism. The first was that um, after the Holocaust, anti-Semitism would disappear. And the second was that with the creation of uh, the Jewish state, anti-Semitism would disappear. That didn't happen. Neither one of them. In fact, the, um, uh, the anti-Semites took a respite after the Holocaust. But that's all it was. It was a brief intermission. And what was unfashionable is now becoming fashionable again. And after the rise of Israel, uh, what is fashionable today is to say, well, I don't hate Jews, I just don't think they should have a state. Or, effectively, that their state is an illegitimate one that doesn't have the right to exist. I am pleased to invite Mr. Naftali Bennett. All that is necessary for evil to succeed is for good men to do nothing. Edmund Burke, I call on you today, my message for you today is do, speak, shout, don't be silent, facing lies. I thank you again for gathering for this global forum in hope of making a difference. Anti-Semites throughout history tried to isolate the Jews, to make them feel alone. You come in here this evening send them a strong message. Jews, Jewish communities, and Israel, the, only, uh, on, the one and only homeland of the Jewish people, are not alone and shall never be alone again. Thank you. Dear friends, this year we, we commemorate the innocent victims of Vilna Ghetto. 70 years ago, the Jews of Vilna were murdered by the Nazis and local collaborators. During the Nazi occupation, Lithuania lost almost all of our compatriots, Jews. We lost the Jews who peacefully lived in Lithuania for more than six centuries. And with them, we have lost a very important part of entire Lithuanian historical and cultural heritage as a remarkable part of the European culture. In fact, antisemitism, as unfortunate as this is, happens to be again on the rise in Europe as openly neo-Nazi parties do not hesitate to stand up and be counted. And although economic malaise can and should be held partly accountable for this development, it is still disconcerting to say the least that this unfolds, let alone in countries like Greece that has been so terribly scarred by the horrors of Second World War. First of all, please allow me to express my gratitude for the opportunity to be here. We appreciate that the distinguished audience of this prestigious conference is keen to know the truth about Hungary and the real situation in our country. You're open-minded enough to consider the facts the Hungarian government would like to share with you. We see the participants here at the conference as partners because we are convinced that we share the common goals. Without looking too hard, we can see some of these dangers again growing around today, whether directed against Jews or against the Jewish state. As recent data has shown, no country is immune to anti-Semitic manifestations. 
we are dealing with a widespread, serious, and ongoing problem. I would like to present you as a very special guest with us this evening. You know that uh, just a week ago, Secretary of State John Kerry has announced the appointment of Mr. Ira Foreman as the new special envoy to monitor and combat anti-Semitism. I am happy to announce that Mr. Ira Foreman, although very new in his job, is here with us this evening and I'm pleased to invite him to say a few words to us. Gideon, thank you for your overly kind words. I'm proud because the United States, the superpower in the world, decides to put this type of resource into this issue, and I will guarantee that we will take this this great, great evil very, very seriously and bring the resources of the U.S. government to combat it. In the third session, uh, we want to talk about the action plan, which essentially is... Originally, the victims of the far right movements often belong to minorities. I think we need to stress that it's not all the social media. Social media plays a, a rather important part nowadays, but there's a vast world out there of forums, web forums, or blogs. Um, to get rid of the burden of the Jews which troubled Britain and Europe, and they wish to be rid of it, but in different moods and adapted to different situations and conditions of the Jewish people itself comes from the from a parliament when it comes from a coalition of parliaments uh, it's very important because it becomes laws it becomes interrogations uh, it becomes statements it becomes uh, books as a tool here that uh, I, I hope you will be able to see the, 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 that, that is the final document of the subcommittee of inquiry into anti-semitism first I, I just wanted to abuse my position and pay tribute to Fiamma, a tremendous gain for Israel. And Gert Weisskirchen, retired from the German Bundestag, will become our second honorary vice president and again remain involved. And what I'd like to do is tell you about the work of the ICCA Internet Task Force and the resulting working group. We've mentioned a number of very large internet platforms, Google, Facebook, uh, Twitter. We made this panel because we thought it's a very, very good example of how a working group can make an effect in the real world, and it's a good model, and this is, uh, I think you are doing it very well. Let me take this opportunity and add my thanks to you all for making the effort and being part of the Global Forum, certainly part of a worthy endeavor. I'll be brief because tonight I have a pleasure of introducing two great Europeans and two great friends, Nikolai Mladenov and Alexander Vondra. This is the fact that we're here today in the independent state of Israel, which has been around for more than 60 years now, discussing anti-Semitism. More than 60 years ago, those who wanted to come together to discuss this threat in Europe would not have had the opportunity to be in an independent state. And I think it is important for us to always remember that. First, I am a philo-Semite all my life. I am in permanent love with 
this beautiful country with Israel. And uh, I could not travel when uh, the communists were in my country. I had no passport, but I had the privilege to be uh, in the delegation of President Václav Havel during his uh, first historical visit here in the spring 1990. Uh, our next uh, panel is about uh, is with uh, <coughs> religious uh, Muslim leaders, and uh, I would like uh, to invite Mr. Uh, Jeremy Jones, who is the director of international and of uh, community affairs for the Australia Israel and Jewish Affairs Council, to moderate the plenary panel with uh, Muslim religious uh, leaders. So thank you very much. Please. It is traditional to open proceedings by paying respect to the, to the indigenous people of the region and land. It helps us gain a sense of history and of context. Here in the land of my ancestors, the land where they walked, I would like to begin by paying respect to those who have con contributed and continue to contribute to making this city, Jerusalem, the vibrant, beating heart of humanity. It has been said wisely that what happens in this place reverberates throughout the world. Our first contribution today will be made by Mufti Gazmed Aga and Mr. Genti Kruja from Albania. Bismillah rahman rahim in the name of the God, of God most beneficent, most merciful. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a pleasure for us, for me, Gazmed Aga and uh, Mr. Genti Kruja, Director of Interfaith Dialogue in Muslim Community of Albania, I would like to say that uh, Albania is the, maybe the only country in the region who has a directory called Just for Interfaith Dialogue. I would, I would now like to invite Imam Hassan Shaogumi from France to address us. Chers amis, bonjour, shalom, salam alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. L'un des sept choses que je trouve très important, c'est l'internet, la première. On a parlé, on a entendu beaucoup de choses sur les réseaux sociaux, comment ils récupèrent, comment ils utilisent. On a des sites internet, malheureusement, 40 à 50 Je donne l'exemple d'un professeur qui est infidèle à la mosquée. Il vient me voir, il m'a demandé, il m'a dit, j'ai 28 élèves au lycée, dans une classe. Quand je le demande combien de personnes regardent la télé par jour, il n'y en a qu'un par jour. It's now my pleasure to introduce our final speaker on the panel, uh, Mufti Dr. Abdul Jalal Sajid from the United Kingdom. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. I begin with the name of God, the most kind, the most merciful. I greet you, greeting of Islam. Salamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Peace and blessing of God be with us all. I am humbled to be invited here by my host, and especially the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, to come before you and to say a few words about Islam and anti Semitism in relationship with the interfaith dialogue between Jews and Muslim throughout the Muslim world. I'm pleased to invite Rabbi Abraham Cooper, Associate Dean of the Simon Wiesenthal Center, to moderate this first panel, please. The first presentation, anti-Semitism in the guise of de-legitimization and anti-Zionism, which is co-chaired by Dr. Pascal Markovich and Dr. Mitchell Bard. I call upon Dr. Bard to present the uh, findings of that particular working group. Mitch. Thank you very much, Rabbi Cooper. It's good to see everyone here this morning. The delegitimizers are basically misfits, liars, and anti-Semites. And we are defeating them, and we're going to continue to defeat them. We're not going to play on their field. We're going to play on our field and set the agenda and focus on the story of Israel, a free democracy that upholds fundamental human rights. Our working group has a tough challenge ahead of us. We're working across all of the issues that the Global Forum covers. 
We're going to keep working, we're going to find more people to join us, and we are going to make a difference. There needs to be greater coordination with Jewish student groups. There's a recommendation to create a centralized body in each country for Jewish students, Jewish student organizations such as Hillel, where students can meet at a centralized conference on a regular basic and basis and develop formalized networks as a grassroots strategy and to work with faculty in this regard. Ladies and gentlemen, we are starting now our second uh, session of uh, presentations of uh, working groups. And for that, I'm pleased to invite Mr. Daniel Mariashin, Executive Vice President of Bnei Brief International, to moderate this panel. Please. Thank you, Gidon. And uh, thank you and your staff uh, for all the work that you did in bringing this very important uh, two-day meeting uh, together. So we will get right to the presentations, and uh, we will begin with Itamar Marcus. The first thing that must be done, uh, and this is somewhat known, is the definition of what's legitimate and what's not legitimate, uh, demonization of the people or the essence of Israel or Jews is illegitimate, criticizing policies is legitimate. So for example, criticizing Israel's building in Jerusalem, whether you agree with it or think it's bad, it's legitimate. Uh, but defining the Jews as Satan, enemies of Allah, uh, or Israel stole Palestine and has no right to exist, that is illegitimate. Thank you, uh, Itamar. We're going to move to Latin America I, uh, as we call up uh, Sammy Eppel uh, to uh, discuss uh, the action plan for Latin America. Perhaps uh, we can keep that in mind uh, as we hear him give his presentation. Sammy. In view of the mission statement of the Working Group on Antisemitism in Latin America, different presentations and discussions held within the framework and diverse ideas and proposals that arose from our work, we propose a series of guidelines for a better and more effective confrontation against anti-Semitism in our region. Clearly and publicly identified and characterized the main trends of the anti-Semitic discourse at present times, emphasizing that the currently so-called anti-Zionism is frequently the renewed face of all traditional anti-Semitism, which utilizes Middle East politics as a pretext for incitement to hatred. Um, I'd now like to um, call on Leslie Weiss. State-sponsored anti-Semitism is virtually non-existent in the former Soviet Union and some post-communist countries, some of which are today members of the European Union and some others. However, traditional anti-Semitism rooted in history and popular anti-Semitic stereotypes remain an issue of concern in many of these countries. To discuss anti-Semitism in the EU and the Western European region, I'd like to call on Mike Wine. Thank you very much, Dan, and thank you to the Global Forum. Having been a participant in every Global Forum, even before it was called the Global Forum, uh, I really think that this is one that uh, is more effectively empowering Jewish community representatives uh, than any of the others that I've been to. Our working session uh, had 50 participants. It was the largest. Interestingly, half of our participants represented their governments or the international intergovernmental organizations. So only 50% came from the communities themselves. I will add uh, just a few words. I'm happy that uh, Mike was speaking before me because what I wanted to argue here in reference to your question is that this should not be necessarily an Israeli task, not the Israeli government task and not uh, Israel as a whole. In my view, it should be mainly the task of Jewish communities around the world. I also believe that diaspora Jews should not be in the business of trying to solve our own identity problems by entering into the morass of Israeli politics. The challenges of assimilation in the diaspora are profound and require greater attention to Jewish education. To take responsibility and to lead the activities of documentation research and mainly uh, keeping an ongoing process of keeping relevant, meaningful memories and remembrance. Last but not least, Combating anti-Semitism today is not only doing justice to Israel, it is protecting the only democracy in the Middle East. 
And I urge you to remember always that we are fighting not only for the Jewish people, not only for the, for the state of Israel, and not even for the Jews living in each and every one of the countries that you represent here. We are fighting for democracy and all of humankind. Thank you. And now I'd like to present to you uh, our next speaker, Professor Yehuda Bauer. He's surely probably among the most accomplished of any of the speakers participating uh, with us yesterday and today. And just exactly three weeks ago, on May 9, 2013, the uh, uh, Egyptian parliament uh, member, Mohammed al sarir uh, declared on Al-Aqsa TV, which was watched by millions of Egyptian citizens, he said, take my heart, which has become as hard as steel, and use it to stone the Jews. Take it and use it to stone the Jews. We will meet them with a beating of the drums of jihad. Theory-based practicality and morally motivated political cynicism. With that, we might possibly get somewhere. Thank you. The three co-chairs uh, will make the presentation. Let me just uh, introduce. Uh, the first one is, of course, Professor uh, Dina Pora. The second uh, co-chair is uh, Talia Naamad. And uh, the third presenter is Michael uh, Salberg. 1,200 year years BC, that is about 3,200 3, years ago, Moses went down the Mount of Sinai and gave the Hebrew tribes the Ten Commandments. And by giving them a law, by giving them a law, made them a people, a nation. Because law, legislation, and later constitution unite a society, give them, give the society values and a self-image. As we approached the sessions of our working group, we were guided by two principles. First, an acknowledgement that a fundamental element of strong and healthy democratic societies is a commitment to equality and fair treatment for all of its members. This is the basis for an expectation of protection against hatred, bigotry, and prejudice toward any individual or minority. The group recognizes that legislation alone is not enough and that legal measures must be accompanied by other measures, including work and education, and education within civil society. This is especially true with respect to the newer democracies. I would like to move to the second uh, report of the second uh, working uh, group and present uh, Anne-Marie. The principles that we are going to recommend can be adapted according to the country where people are living, of course. There is not a unique way of handling things. The last presentation, uh, let me just present the presenters, Dr. Uh, Dov Maimon. The work in the workshops was extremely constructive. People came to us from many different perspectives. They contributed, they influenced, they changed minds, and they gave us new thoughts. And my pleasure to pass over the floor to Dov to make some additional comments. Thank you very much. What we are afraid, it's something different. It's because all the attacks that we see, like circumcision, and uh, in, 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 in circumcision in Germany and Austria, and, and Schrita in, in France, uh, uh, Holland, uh, Poland, and already, already four or five countries where it is already f uh, forbidden, and over five or six other things that we see everywhere in Europe, with schools, public funding, and, uh, and many other things all around. It's all together, it's come like a kind of delegitimization of Judaism in Europe. Anti-Semitism is a shape-shifting monster. Its existence persists, but its form constantly changes. This global forum marks the beginning of an adopted effort to combat anti-Semitism, an ad adaptation to the form that anti-Semitism now takes. We came in solidarity 
we leave with commitment. Thank you very much. Friends, participants of the, of the fourth conference for Global Forum for Combating Antisemitism, I would like to thank you for the groundbreaking work you have been doing here in the last three days in the course of the working group deliberations and the plenary presentations. David Matas has delivered a clear and operative report of the conference final document. The Action Plan for Combating Antisemitism 2013 and Beyond. This is a key achievement and will enable us to pursue a shared strategy and plan in our struggle against antisemitism in its many manifestations. We shall proceed now to the awards giving ceremony of the conference. Uh, I would like to call Mr. Itamar Marcus. Uh, Mr. Sami Eppel, Sergio Vider, Leslie Weiss, Mike Wine, uh, Mark Nobel, Mitchell Bard, Pascal Markovic, David Matas, uh, Andre Oboler, Dina Porat, Taliana Amat, Michael Salberg, Anne-Marie Revkolevsky, Dov Maimon, Philippe Carmel, Charles Asher Small, Michelle Whiteman. We still have uh, to give one last award. Uh, this is for a person who is not uh, a co-chair, but uh, was the chair of the conference three times in the past. And I